Welcome to another exciting episode of the Business of Digital podcast, featuring your host, Matt Siltala and Dave Rohr. Hey guys, excited to have you on another one of these Business of Digital podcasts. Uh, I am extra excited today and uh, for our, our special guest, How's it going? Uh, Akvi- Akvila, see, look what they did to, to it. But we have uh, Akvila DeFazio with us. How, how's it going? Doing well, thanks. Thank you for having me on. And we do have Dave over there. How's it going, Dave? Somewhere. I'm here. So we were chatting about this in, in kind of the direction that we were wanting to go. But um, Dave and I both suck at Facebook ads. Well, I guess I, guess, uh, I shouldn't say we suck. We just don't do a lot with them. And um, I always tell people to work with susan or you <laughs> yeah that, that's that's what we do that's yeah, pretty exactly. much what i do i'm like I'm, I'm like two people susan or aguila so anyway all right what we want to do though is is again this is this is completely uh up to you but cut, you know the direction that i was thinking we go is there's a lot of people that are just wondering about this or that are new to this or i think about like you know i have that i do a lot of the photography and I'm always getting the, the notifications from Facebook ads saying, hey, you know that if you just boost this or you do this, you know, you could get like 58,000 impressions or this or that or whatever. And so it's like, you know, it's it's also like, uh, I don't want to say like overwhelming. I just, it's just something that I've never jumped into. And so we needed to have an expert on to kind of help um, navigate us through or, or talk about it or, or, you know, share the things that they want to when it comes to Facebook ads and advertising and things like that. And so, um, with that said, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce us and talk a little bit or, or introduce yourself and talk a little bit about, uh, your company and where people can find you. And then we'll just go from there. Sounds great. Well, thanks for having me on, first of all. And uh, so for those of you that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, I'm Akvila DeFazio. I am the president of Advertise Inc. And we are a social media advertising agency based in Central California. We uh, provide, uh, you know, account management and consulting for Facebook ads, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, you name it. Um, all the ads. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all of the ads. Um, I used to do paid search as well for the last, oh gosh, almost 12 years, but I shifted our services about two years ago to focus primarily on paid social just because there's so many opportunities out there. And I'm just really passionate about, you know, targeting people based on interests and behaviors rather than just keywords. So that's kind of where I'm at now. We work with a lot of small, medium-sized, and even larger companies. And um, yeah, then it just, that's what I do. Awesome. Now, um, I, and, and again, like I said, I, I really appreciate you being on there. And, and we've worked with you before. You've you've uh, referred business over, and, and I've known you forever with uh, your past work at the, the conferences and things yeah. like that. And so... Um, This has been exciting, but what would you say, and again, we can take this whatever direction you want, but I'm looking at it from a standpoint of, of, you know, just some of the questions that we get from people. Like, again, there's, there's so many mom and pops that I work with, you know, whether they're the air conditioner company or they're the construction company local, or they're the dentist or orthodontist or, or lawyer or whatever. And they all basically come to me with the same question. They're like, how do we get started on Facebook or, or should we be on Facebook? Should we do ads? You know, they're always telling me to, 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 to spend money and what do you do in situations like that? Or what do you do with people or how do you get them comfortable and, and just, you know, kind of starting off with it? All right. So first of all, see, yes, test out Facebook ads. I know that they're a business and trying to sell their services as well. But if you want your business to grow, it's really tough to get it organically through social media platforms, especially Facebook these days, which, have, you know, you guys know as well that I think even if you're lucky, maybe you get 1% of your Facebook fans to actually see is your now? content. Is it, is it one? Uh, a whole yeah. whopping 1%? <laughs> whole whopping wow. one. 1%. <laughs> yeah, it's been dwindling over the years. And, you know, as, as marketers, we've seen that trend. But a lot of business owners wonder why are they not getting as much reach. And that's why, essentially, because you're competing with people's, you know, grandmother posts or cat videos. So as a business, you have to stand <laughs> out and pay to play. But Facebook, uh, the reason why I try to get clients, like, you know, granted, I want to work with them, but I'm also going to be honest and tell them if it's not going to work. But 80% of the world, I think, is on Facebook now. So your audience is definitely there. And it is the least expensive um, online advertising platform. And it has a really robust way to target different demographics. So 
your audience is there, um, test it out. But uh, you guys were talking about funnels earlier. And actually, let, let, before I get down to funnels and you know potentially scare anybody off, but <laughs> even if you aren't ready to advertise on Facebook, but you do have a website, set up an account through Facebook Business Manager. It's free to do, and you can um, add your business assets to it, like your business page and your ads account, and then take the pixel that's in the advertising account, which is a small piece of code, and put that onto your website so that you will get a head start on advertising and building out custom audiences later for targeting of people that have previously visited your website. So you'll kind of get a head start even if you're not ready to begin adding, um, you know, creating campaigns and putting budget into it. Excellent. Now, I, I, and again, I don't want to throw uh, Dave under the bus, but I know that uh, Dave mentioned that, you know, he, he, he's dabbled in some, uh, some of this for us with, uh, with, the, with the podcast. And so he did mention earlier that he might have, uh, have you look at what we've done or, or just kind of talk to you about some of the stuff that we've done and, and, and you could rip us apart. But uh, <laughs> what do you got for us, Dave? Well, thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's, and, and I, the, the biggest question always for, you know, when I think about any of my projects, you know, this podcast or my agency or anything, it's what, where on Facebook. So there's WhatsApp, which I've literally never done anything on. Um, and I, think you can target it through somewhere in Facebook stuff. Mm -hmm. But then there's Instagram and there's Facebook itself, which is the first choice. You know, it's almost like for if you're used to Google, it's you do do you want to do YouTube or do you want to do, you know, typical search. But then it's also do I promote a post? Do I you know, just put out an ad? Do I do um, something in Instagram? What what qualific I don't know if qualifications is the right way to go, but how do you, what's your process of not just where to start, but for a campaign, what questions do you ask to figure out what type of ads make sense for someone? Great question. So typically I ask what their goals are. So, you know, everyone wants to drive revenue and usually it's when it comes to e-commerce, it's sales, maybe it's for your podcast, you want people to subscribe or to download an episode. So it depends on what your goal is. But before you get to that, people normally have to have a lot more touch points with your brand before they actually you know, open up their wallets. Whereas something like a podcast, you know, you guys aren't charging for it. and that's an easier incentive for somebody to complete that action. But if you are in e-commerce and you're looking to actually have somebody open up their wallet, you'll want to start out with a, kind of a top funnel or like an initial goal of getting people introduced to your brand and then maybe getting them to your website and maybe um, you know driving engagement or if you have videos and you want them to watch certain videos uh, all the way through um, or as much as they can. And then eventually getting them down through a remarketing campaign to get them to come back as a warmer audience to complete that action with like a harder uh, sell. So if you're familiar with remarketing, um, you know, think of, say you go to like Amazon or some other website and you're looking at a pair of shoes and you don't end up buying them, but then you start seeing them all over the web. Facebook has that same type of feature within its own ecosystem that you can do as well and get people to come back and complete an action. So typically we'll start with goals and then uh, we'll talk to our clients about who their target audience is. And oftentimes they have an idea, but we'll also test out things like lookalike audiences, which perform very well. As much as I don't want to give up control to the machine, uh, Facebook does <laughs> do have... It. I do, because it works very well, but you know, I have a love-hate relationship with it because I love being a part of our accounts and you know, having a little bit more manual that's pretty much anyone in our industry with any platform we have to use <laughs> love hate relationships. That's true, that's my true. problem with Google Ads. I know we talked with Jim <laughs> Banks about that. Yeah, that's the the AI there is infiltrating basically everything in yeah. Google Ads, and it drives me crazy. So it's hard to let go, right? Um, but with Facebook, if you do custom audiences, which essentially you can either take people that have went to your, visited your website through the pixel or um, maybe something like an email list of newsletter subscribers or customers or leads that you have and importing that into their system. It's all anonymized, at least on our, our end as advertisers. I uh, don't know what's going on on the Facebook side, but uh, if you just create a lookalike off of it, Facebook will compile uh, a new audience of people that you can target that are like the audience that you've 
selected. So people that are like your customers based on interests and behaviors, and those tend to work very well. So if you aren't sure of who your audience is, that's a good place to start. Or say you're selling water bottles, you might want to target people that are interested in water bottles or other water, bo water bottle brands. So um, then it kind of leads me to some other variables to where if you have a small budget and you're just getting started out, say like, I don't know, $10 a day, you will want to target something a lot more precise to your audience. So uh, maybe you'll want to forego the look-alike, which is usually broader than something that is like, you know, water bottles, if you're selling water bottles. Um, and then working your way up, seeing how that does and expanding and growing your budget that way, rather than just opening up the floodgates and letting Facebook do its thing. If you have a little bit of a bigger budget, I um, highly recommend doing broader things and then scaling back and optimizing that way. So you brought up something that I'm just curious about because we get this all the time as well. And I'm just curious how you answer this for potential clients because you said, OK, you have a lot of the people, um, you know, that uh, that I mentioned earlier, those types of businesses are those ones that talk or, or that have those budgets that you were talking about, the smaller ones, the mm -hmm. $10 a day or whatever. And so a lot of them come to us and say, hey, you know, I have this, you know, whether it's 300 a month, 400 a month, 500 a month, but it's a smaller budget. It's all I can do. Should I put this money towards Google Ads? Should I put this money towards Facebook? Or, you know, should I put this money toward, you know, when when they come and they ask you those questions, where where do you, or, or how do you answer that? And how do you, you know, explain to them if it, if it ends up being, hey, you're gonna get more bang for your buck with Facebook because of X, Y, and Z or whatever. What, how do you, like, what have you seen from your experience? Cause you have, you like you said, you've done both sides, the, the Google ad side and now more focusing on you know, the social platforms and the ad side, what do you tell them? I usually tell them to start with Facebook just because it's less expensive and people may not necessarily be looking for you because they're going to Facebook to socialize. But if you can get in front of them, especially as a smaller or newer brand that you can get them into your funnel. Google is great, if, but people tend to go there more with intent and looking for something for, in particular, or unless you have an established brand name and they're searching your brand uh, terms. But I typically tell people to start with Facebook and then if they can, you know, if they have enough budget, we will split kind of 50-50 and see how they do because it, as you guys know that, that everything's just part of a, a, a pie essentially because Facebook's a great introductory right. point. You can get people to buy directly off Facebook, but it's not, you know, one-to-one -one conversion. Typically people will go and do a little bit of research. You know, they might need some sort of incentive. They might go to uh, Google and look for you afterwards, maybe just to shop and compare or they might come through your email marketing funnels. So there's a lot of different touch points, but Facebook's a really good way to get started and at a lower cost. So so what do you tell those, or, or Dave, did you have something you wanted to jump in on that? Well, I was sort of, yeah. Go for it. Um, it's the good and bad about muting and unmuting. People see it. Um, the I was going to jump back to the AI, but what number of conversions, what number, what budget number do you think someone like in ad in AdWords, you can do a couple dollars a day, but then mm -hmm. people are like, oh, we have eight business lines. You know, we're, um, you know, we have whatever I'm looking at laptops. We have laptops for homes. We have government, we have business, blah, 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 blah. Like Dell does. Mm -hmm. um, we want to target all of them and we have a budget of $15 a day. And you're like, yeah, that's not going to work. What practical budget and what kind of goals does someone need to have? And then also like my biggest problem with the AI for Google ads is that if it's a long-term buying cycle, which you're just kind of talking about, if you're trying to do more of an awareness campaign, mm -hmm. people, what do you tell them around practicality of you're not going to see 50 conversions, <laughs> right? They're like, but we spent all this money. You're like, really, really, you didn't. Like, <laughs> you spent a little bit of money yeah. and we got a lot of new awareness. But like those two things, I think are, are like what kind of minimum budget should people expect on the various? And I, we won't even get into the various, the, the insane number of ways that you can advertise. Mm -hmm. But what should people expect to be able to get ish? And I know that that that's you know tough to say. Yeah, so <laughs> you can certainly get away with a small budget. However, the caveat is that it will take longer to learn and optimize and yeah. see what's working, see what's not, and then, you know, testing different variables. So it will take longer. Um, 
if Matt actually mentioned it when we first just hopped on that, you know, just boosting posts and you can do that for a dollar a day and get a lot more visibility that way. But if you're looking to do something with a different uh, campaign objective, if you have a small budget, I typically recommend just forgo the awareness campaigns or engagement and just do a website traffic campaign. So then that way you're getting people to your website and, you know, getting them further down your funnel and a lot quicker. Granted, it'll still take time to learn, but um, that's one way to do it. Uh, I highly advise against starting with a conversion type of campaign, especially if, you know, that, that's lower funnel, it tends to be more expensive, and it's harder to optimize for. So kind of what you started touching upon with uh, 50 conversions, Facebook has a within their algorithm that if you select a campaign objective, say it's traffic, you need to get 50 conversions or 50 people to click to your website to complete that action within one week for a campaign. Um, so if you're picking conversions and you're not getting those 50 sales, especially so say you only have like $10 a day to spend, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, you know that you might get like 10 people to click through hypothetically, and you can't get that 50. So um, just something to think about as you're doing that. And also if you you have higher um, price products or services, that's where the challenge is going to lie because if you only have ten dollars a day to spend and you're selling something that's several hundred dollars um, it's going to take a much longer time to potentially get that sale I, i'd also say if you're selling something for a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars and you don't have ten dollars <laughs> for a budget to try something you you need to go back to your boss or you need to pony up some money <laughs> because exactly you know, or if your margins are that thin that's a different story um but yeah that if you're selling something for 15 grand and you don't have $10 a day to try mm -hmm. something, I don't know why you're even trying to do marketing. Exactly. Yeah, it's an investment, so you'll, you'll need to put something into it. So Dave had uh, shared a link with us that no nobody but us can see um, talking about how, and he said he just saw this today about, about Facebook makes a play for creators with a tool that, um, you know, for feed or for monetizing uh, content. And so, uh, you know, obviously thoughts on this but the the other side of it is how do you stay up on like all the changes or you know everything that that that's constantly seems to be changing with facebook or or you know i mean it's it's like with any any other platforms anytime changes happen we all grumble but like how do you stay on top of that and how do you you know keep your your wits about you with uh, stuff like that Great question. So typically I'll check a lot of the sites that you know, like marketing land from the post that you shared this morning with us. Uh, I'll also check all the different platform business blogs because they tend to announce it there first and then it just filters out through news publications. But I'll check those frequently and uh, while I do run my own company, I still manage uh, accounts day to day. So uh, I'm in there to see any changes that happen uh, personally and you know just test things out as they come in. But uh, Twitter is also another great resource. You know, our community is really, uh, uh, we like to converse a lot. So there's a lot of uh, great Twitter chats, like uh, FB ads chat, if you're on the paid social side or PPC chat, uh, the hashtag, and people ask questions and share articles and things That's that they great. find. So I usually check those out uh, for any news that I might have missed uh, or that somebody got access to first. So that's another great resource. FB or, ads chat. That's great. I, or, I or how much you love ad editor for oh, yes. Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think they put a little bit more uh, care into their products for us since we're all spending so much money for our clients. Oh, yeah. No you kidding. would think. Yeah, they don't have a standalone, do they? You have to go through the... Is there any tool that you use? <sighs> Maybe no. that's, a good, that's another good question. Like, I... I use for Google ads, I live and die in Excel and um, Google ad editor. And then some things I still have to do on the website. And sometimes I go in there just to make sure that, you know, I have the right data. But what about Facebook? What are you using? Just the platform itself. There are some great uh, third party tools like Ad Espresso. Uh, however, you know, I if you're to, managing or... things in bulk, like some of those will be better, but honestly, everything that you can potentially get through Facebook's interface is within theirs. That's probably on the top of my list for them to get an offline editor, but you know, the way things are going, I, that might be a while. So fingers crossed. You would think that they would be building one. Hmm. One would Maybe. think. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope in this day and age. Well, Bing doesn't really have one, I don't know. Uh, they do. 
Did I? Okay. Yeah. So see how much I use Bing. I don't, sadly, that much. Well, I know we're not talking about search ads, but uh, low volume, but really great cost per acquisition. <laughs> Depending on your market, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, oops, sorry, uh, go ahead, Matt. No, I, I, and, and I know that we're approaching the 20 minute mark, but maybe just take a, a, a couple minutes. Uh, we'll just go a little bit longer just because this stuff, it, it, you know, fascinates me. And, and you had mentioned it uh, that I mentioned it earlier with in regards to boosting and stuff like that. And so I'm thinking, uh, I, I'm just curious, you know, like, let's say that because I, I do have that uh, Facebook page that's basically sharing, up, sharing my photography. And at this point, I'm. You know, I, I sell prints if people want them, if they reach out to me, but I guess the most important thing at this point is just growing my reach and, and the people that see the photos that I post and things like that. And so, you know, if, if, if that's my goal, just growing the following, you know, is, is boosting good or should I make different plays or what would you recommend for, for someone with, in a situation like mine? Do you want people to just check out your photos and engage with your posts about them or actually go to your website and potentially you know, like order photos? Uh, I think at this point, just, just building up the following within the Facebook page and, and, and uh, you know, just building up that audience there would be like my first goal at this point. So let me ask you this. Do you want people to like your Facebook page or for them to maybe subscribe to a newsletter of yours? Probably at this point it would just be like liking the page, yeah. Um, okay, so here's the thing with that. With Facebook has been devaluing the like over the years, and you know the organic reach is so minimal at this point that if you do want to advertise to people that, you know, that you already advertised to to get you to like your page, you're essentially double paying and double advertising to get those people to maybe complete a future action. Interesting. So just something to think about. You can certainly do a likes campaign. That would be the quickest way for you to grow your audience, but uh, depends on you know what your budget is and what your long-term goals are, if that's actually and, something and worthwhile. My, <laughs> and mine was just mostly curiosity because like I've never, I love photography and I've never really gotten into it to try to make money. I mean, if people want to buy a print from me, like I almost certainly do it and that's fine. But I was just curious mostly, but uh, you know, I, who knows at some point I may get serious about it, but. Your eye for photography is so great. Like, <laughs> people should own your stuff. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. Thank you. And don't keep them on Facebook. Send them to your site. <laughs> See, that's what I need to do. I, I, I have I have a domain name, but I just haven't uh, done anything with it. But awesome. Well, uh, Dave, any final questions? Uh, you should like us on Facebook so yes. that we can reach a whole one percent of you organically <laughs> and not have to advert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, no, I think the, I think th that process that she just went down with you, I think more people need to do before they use Facebook or anything really. Well, yeah, exactly. That's why it's, I, I think so many people, like when they talk to me and, you know, act, you give it the same thing. It's like, oh, we want to do Facebook ads. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, what are your goals? What's the campaign? What's your overall marketing strategy? And they're like, no, I want to do Facebook ads. You're like, well, hold on, <laughs> you know, or I want to do SEO or I want to do, you know, AdWords or ads or whatever it is. It's like, but wait, what's, what's the strategy? What's the campaign? What's mm -hmm. the, you know, and they just want to do something. And it's like, what's your budget? And then all of a sudden you start asking all these questions. They're like, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm like, yeah. Um, but I think when you're going to do Facebook, especially it's you, you, I think Google search is a little bit easier in ads. Cause you can just hear. These are the keywords that we know people mm -hmm. search for and you can jump into it. I think with Facebook, you have to ask yourself even more questions around yeah. what goals are. Do we want to do on their site? Do we want to push them to our site? Is it informational? Is it transactional? I think you really need to walk through and think through your budget, your goals, and then start to ask those questions of, do we want to sponsor a post? Do we want to, you know, do we want to do video ads? And which is another topic I know that you talk a lot about. You know, do you want to do video stuff? Do you want to do photo, text? That's a whole different thing. But I think you first have to start asking yourself, what are our goals? What are our budget? What is the overall campaign? And then start going into that stuff. That's my takeaway. <laughs> well <right>. said. <laughs> so, so, so any final thoughts on that before we wrap this up? Or what you see people do time and time again wrong that you wish they would do <laughs> set up from the start first? 
correctly? Uh, that they want to do conversion campaigns because that's their final goal. But if you're starting with a cold audience, you can't just be like, hi, nice to meet you. Give me your wallet. So start with the uh, top of <laughs> can't funnel. Can't rob them. <laughs> can't do that. Dang it. Uh, digitally, it's, you know, unless you're a scammer, <laughs> maybe. But um, <laughs> don't I don't uh, encourage that. So... Yeah, to start something with a, maybe a traffic campaign or, you know, if you have a little bit more budget, start with awareness. But if you have a small budget, you're looking to get people to your site and off of Facebook and to start engaging with you, do a traffic campaign and have fun. Good luck. Test all the things. Uh, test all the things. There we go. Well, Avila, I really appreciate you joining us today and chatting. Um, we're going to definitely have to have you on again where we can dive like deeper into very uh, specific things. But as a general overview, like I think this was perfect and It'll get people thinking. So thank you very much for taking some time today to chat with us about this. Always a pleasure to speak with you too. Awesome. Well, for uh, Agvila with Advertise uh, and Dave Rohr with Northside Metrics, I'm Matt Sotzel with Avalanche Media. And we thank you guys for joining us on uh, another one of these podcasts. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye.